is because of you and me that is going to be baptized, our faith. Because for him, he doesn't even know where we are. So let us give all this time for him actively. That's our love for him. Let us speak on his behalf, respond on his behalf, and be joyful for him. She will come to remember, say, when I was just a child, my parents took me to the church. I was told there were many people who were active. Somebody will tell him that story later. So we're going to begin the baptism by invoking the Spirit to guide us, especially during this season of Lent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. As I mentioned, you are welcome here. I'm going to ask some few questions to know your intentions. I'll ask first the parents. What name do you give your child? Ronald James Esuri. What do you ask of God's church for Ronald James? Be baptized. Be baptized. What do you ask? Hmm. Baptism, good health, good life. Fine. The godparents. You have asked to have your children baptized. In doing so, you are accepting the responsibility of training him in the practice of the faith. It will be your duty to bring him up to keep God's commandments as Christ taught us by loving God and our neighbor. Do you clearly understand what you're undertaking? God parents, are you ready to help the parents of this child, Ronald, in their duty as Christian parents? Ronald James Chesuli, the Christian community welcomes you with great joy. In its name now, I claim you for Christ, our Savior, by the sign of his cross. Let four of you do the same. You do here, four of you. You make the, the cross. I now trace the cross on your head and invite your parents and godparents to do the same. I want to do the same. Now we are going to listen to the word of God from the Gospel of Matthew for our friend. Jesus said to the eleven disciples. All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This short message here Jesus has given us is important. First, I thank you, parents, for offering this child to the church. You're just like Prophet Anna, who spent all her time in the church when God gave him a son he came and offered back. Thank you for bringing him to the church so that through the Spirit of God, he will find his life. We are just planting that mustard seed, Jesus says, into his heart. Then little by little, it will grow. But now the question is this. That seed which he doesn't know will only grow if we water it, we give it water. One of the greatest gifts in life of all the gifts we can give a human person is the value, human value and Christian value. Those are more than giving him a car 
giving him a house, giving him a plane. The car, the bicycle will make him fight with his younger sister. <laughs> They'll be fighting over it. Hey, hey. But the value will make him respect the sister. And the value will make the sister respect the brother. And this community where there's a lot of flames or fightings and this, that value we impart in him will make him to make good decisions. We not get involved in protests. We not get involved in robbing people's things if we give him that value. He would appreciate his life with the little that you provide for him as a gift, but that would be monitored by the value. My only disappointment sometimes, many times the children now, they find it hard to come to the church. We come really with a good idea to bring the child to the church. When the child begins growing, he or she depends on us to take him to the church every Sunday. I pray that you will give him time, the sacrifice you made today. Can you make it in his life, present him to the church? He will not understand the theology we say in the church. No, he will not understand the theology we are preaching. No. The only thing he will understand in his life is my parents used to go with me all the time to the church. All the time to the church. When he reaches seven, eight, nine, then he begins putting some meaning of why we go to the church. It's a process. But that process, if it's broken by not bringing the child to the church, so what is the church? He's putting a lot of rules on it. No. The church is a sacred road of receiving grace of God. Jesus says clearly here, I command you to go and baptize. Thank you, you are baptizing him today. And then Jesus says, make sure, teach him to observe all the commandments I've given you. And he says, you will not be alone. Behold, I am with you. Jesus is represented by, represented by the godparents. They are with you. Don't only stop in the church. Once in a while, drive to go and see how is our little boy doing. When there's Christmas, when there's Easter, write a card. You know that way, your godparents, send him a card. And let the parents keep that card in the record. When he grows, you begin reading those words, what our godparents, my godparents used to tell me. That's another way of, for him to remember his Christian faith. Write notes, little ones. For him, even doesn't read, keep it well. When he's in grade three, grade four, say, you see, these greetings are from your godparent. And that makes a change in his life. That's how he remain touched in, in contact with him. So thank you too for supporting. And thank all the parents here, people who are here to support him. Now we'll call the godparent here to come, the godfather here to come. We're going to share prayers over him. My dear brothers and sisters, let us ask our Lord Jesus Christ to look lovingly on this child who is to be baptized, on his parents and godparents and in all the baptized faith. Speak up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By the mystery of your death and resurrection, leave this child in light, give him the new life of baptism, and welcome him into the holy church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Through baptism and confirmation, make him the faithful follower to witness to your gospel. Lord, hear our prayer. Lead him by holy life to the joys of God's kingdom. Lord, hear our prayer. Make the lives of him, parents and godparents, an example of faith to inspire this child. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep, keep his family always. Keep his him. Keep his family always in your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Renew the grace of our baptism in each one of us. Lord, hear our prayer. We're not going to say pray for us. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Only, say only pray for us. St. <laughs> John the Baptist, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Peter and St. Paul, pray for us. 
all holy men and women pray for us. Now I'm going to anoint Ronald James with the oil of the baptism. Almighty and ever-living God, you send your only begotten Son into the world to cast out the power of Satan, spirit of evil, to rescue man from the kingdom of darkness and bring him into the splendor of your kingdom of light. We pray for this child, Ronald James, set him free from original sin, make him a temple of your glory, and send your light, Holy Spirit to dwell in him. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Ronald James Chisuli, we anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ, your Savior. May he strengthen you with his power who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. It's a nice square. James, may you have strength in the power of Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns and protects you always. Now we're going to pray for the water already there in the baptism, and that water reminds us of our own baptism. My dear brothers and sisters, we now ask God to give this child new life in abundance through water and the Holy Spirit. Father, you give us grace through sacramental signs, which tells us of the wonders of your unseen power. In baptism, you use your gifts of water, which you have made a rich symbol of the grace you give us in this sacrament. At the very dawn of creation, your spirit breath on the waters, making them the wellspring of all holiness. The waters of the great flood, you made a sign of the waters of baptism that make an end of sin and a new beginning of goodness. Through the waters of the Red Sea, you led Israel out of slavery to be an image of God's holy people set free from sin by baptism. In the waters of Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. Your son will that water and blood should flow from his side as he hung upon the cross. And his resurrection, he told his disciples, go out and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. But I look now with love upon your church and unseal with the water of baptism. By the power of the Spirit, give the water of baptism the grace of your Son. You created man in your own likeness, cleanse him, from sin in a new birth to innocence by water and spirit. We ask you, Father, with your Son, to send the Holy Spirit upon the water we are going to use for baptizing James Ronald. May all who are buried with Christ in the death of baptism rise also with him into the new life of resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we all stand, we are going to renew our faith, the faith in which we are going to baptize our friend Ronald. Dear parents and godparents, you have come here to present this child of baptism. By water and the Holy Spirit, he is to, be, he is to receive the gift of new life from God who is love. On your part, you must make it your constant care to bring him up in the practice of the faith. See that the divine life which God gives him is kept safe from poison of sin to grow always stronger in his heart. In your faith, if your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, renew the vows of your own baptism. 
reject sin, profess your faith in Christ Jesus. This is the faith of the church. This is the faith in which this child, Ronan, is about to be baptized. I ask each one of you, do you reject Satan? Yes. And all his works? Yes. And all his empty promises? Yes. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Yes. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who yes. was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, and died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? Yes. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Now we're going to move to the baptismal font for the baptism. I hope he's not going to cry. I don't want him to cry. Bring him to me. Okay, the other photo. That'll be okay. For the photo, that'll be okay for you. That side, I'll, I'll go by your side. Parents, godparents, and all the faith, is it your will that Ronald should be baptized? in the faith of the church which we have all professed with you? Yes. Ronald, Ronald, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. You Amen. clap for him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Ronald. Yeah. Do you know what has happened? Yeah. <laughs> he wants more. He wants more. Yeah. Now we go to the other side, we go back now. We go to finish there. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> now he's awake. Now he's up. He's up now. <laughs> now what comes next is very important. What comes next is to anoint him with the oil of chrism, the oil which makes him to be a priest, a prophet, and a king. And with this oil, most of us Christians, we do not know the meaning. Maybe because when we were baptized as a little kids, we forgot the meaning. This oil, like when we were ordained priests, they put in our hands. This oil which anoints you like right now we do in baptism, makes each one of us baptized to share the common priesthood. All the baptized share the common priesthood. What does it do? If there's somebody, if there's somebody who is in danger of death, somebody in an accident, somebody who is about to die, he has not been baptized, there's no priest, there's no deacon, and you are baptized, or there's near person who is baptized, can validly baptize that person at the point of death. Once that person is baptized, you bring the record to the parish. If by the grace of God he survives, or she survives, he did not die, he or she will never be baptized again. That baptism of you is valid. It's called the baptism at the point of danger, point of death. So don't allow, if something happens, or there's miscarriage, or something happens, don't allow that person just to go without baptizing you by your baptism. You can baptize. Is that okay? Yes. But don't go and begin baptizing all the children. <laughs> <laughs> it's only when at point of death, somebody who is desiring baptism is about to die, you can baptize when there's no priest. And this is the importance of this. It makes you a priest to say the word of God. It makes you a prophet to foretell 
the kingdom of God. He makes you a king to be the servant, not the kings we have today. That king for Christ is to be the servant of others. So this is what we are going to raise him to. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you from sin, given you a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and welcomed you into his holy people. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation as Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king. So may you live always as a member of his body, sharing everlasting life. Now I will invite the Godmother to come here to open for me this, open this and remove that out. Now we're gonna cover him with a <clears throat> white garment. It's a sign of holiness that try to keep him as white as you can. Keep him clean as possible as you can. You stand there aside. And then this one, you come near here, the four, the four of you, you trap it on his head. The four of you. Yeah. That's the father, yeah, yeah. Catch. Yeah, you put on, you put on the head. Like this, and I will share the prayer. Ronald James Chisuli, you have become a new creation and you have clothed yourself in Christ. See in this white garment the outward sign of your Christian dignity with your family and friends to help you by word and example. Bring that dignity and sustain into the everlasting life of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You are a good boy. <laughs> yeah, you keep it off. Okay. You can keep it off. Okay. Now you remain here. Remain here. Remain here. Remain here. Receive this light. Go to the same spot. And all the first thing you touch plus him. Let him touch a little bit and all of you touch too. Touch the candle. Touch the candle. Parents and godparents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly. This child of yours, Ronald, has become, has been enlightened by Christ. He is to walk always in a, as a child of the light. May he keep the flame of faith alive in his heart. May the Lord, may the Lord, when the Lord comes, may he find him always and meet him with the saints in the heavenly kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. That's how he fights for his faith. Very good, you are doing well. <laughs> He's fighting for his faith. <laughs> Keep it on. Keep it on. Let it not go off until you reach home. That's your work as a parent. If the light gets off on the way, you have failed your work as the godmother. That tells you it's not easy to be a mother or to be a godfather or to be a teacher. To be a keeper of the other person is not easy. The wind will blow, people will shake you, but you have to keep the light. That is the meaning. It's not easy to keep this light up to home. That tells you it will not be easy for you to keep him, but make an effort. Now you can blow it off. <laughs> the Lord has made, now I'm gonna touch his ear. This now is a priest prophet his ear to hear the word of God from his friends and his mouth to speak to the others the word of God. Ronald James Chisuli, the Lord Jesus made the dead and to, to hear and the dumb to speak. May he touch your ears. Is that okay? 
and you must. <laughs> to proclaim his faith to the praise and glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Now, dear beloved, this child has been reborn in baptism. He is new, is now called the child of God. For so indeed he is, in confirmation, he will receive the fullness of God's spirit. In holy communion, will share the banquet of Christ's sacrifice, calling God his father in the midst of the church. In the name of this child, in the spirit of our communion sonship, let us pray together the words our Lord Jesus gave us. As we say together, our Father, who art in heaven, the Lord be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Now I'm going to ask the mother of the child to come here. Come with the baby to, to me here. Come now here, you face the people there. Very good. God the Father, through his son, the virgin's child, has brought joy to all Christians' mothers. As they see the hope of eternal life, shine on their children. May he bless the mother of this child, Ronald, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. She now thanks God for the gift of her child. May she be one with him in thanking him forever in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So you go back, the, 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 the father comes with the child. Ronald, you are a good child. I'll give you the speaker. Very soon. God is the giver of life, human and divine. May he bless the father of this child, Ronald, in the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy Spirit. He and his wife will be the first teachers of, the, of their child in the ways of faith. May they, may they be also the best of teachers, bearing witness to faith by what they say and do in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Can go back. Now all of us, we stand. By God's gift... Through water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn to everlasting life in his goodness. May he continue to pour out his blessings upon these sons and daughters of his. May he make them always, whenever and wherever they may be, faithful members of his holy people. May he send his peace upon all of you who are gathered here for the baptism of Ronald James Chisuli. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Now we give a big clap for Ronald. Now he's a new baptized. Don't cry. Don't cry. If you cry, Ronald, if you cry, they'll hear your voice. Say, huh? Huh? Say, huh? Uh, uh. <laughs> Thank you so much, eh? Thank you so for much. For accompanying me.